Hello everyone, my name is Mr. Oldridge and I am here to teach you grade 12 advanced functions. We're going to start on unit 1, which is polynomial functions, and they end up looking like this. You'll notice that polynomial functions are a series of terms, which means they're added together or subtracted if the coefficient is negative, but they are added together and each term is the product of a coefficient the coefficients are what is highlighted in this first equation, and x's with non-negative integer exponents. That basically means whole numbers all the way down to zero. Here we have 5, 4, 3, 2. We also have an x to the 1. There is no exponent there, and we assume it is 1 for that. And this one doesn't even have x written on it, but that represents x to the 0, because anything to the power of 0 is 1, and 9 times 1 is also 9. So we don't bother writing x to the 0 ever in polynomial functions. Now this is another polynomial function. It has three terms, 1, 2, 3. And the degree of each term is 2, 15, and 0. These are the exponents that I'm reading out to you. The leading coefficient of a polynomial is the coefficient on the term with the highest degree, aka highest exponent. In this case, 15 was the highest exponent, and the coefficient on the x to the 15 term was negative 8 thirds. That makes it the leading coefficient. We're going to need to remember what leading coefficient means for the rest of the unit. Now, what is the degree of this polynomial? Well, because the highest exponent we find on x is 5, the degree of the polynomial is 5. Okay. Here we have examples of the six most common types of polynomials you are going to see. The most common you'll see in grade 12 is this one. It is x cubed x to the power of 3. I wish I hadn't written over the 3 there. It, the highest exponent on x is 3, and it is called a cubic function. What you saw in grade 11 was a quadratic function, which had a lot of x to the squareds in it. What you've dealt with in grade 9 and 10 were linear functions. The power of x was 1. What you dealt with in previous grades was just whole numbers. Those are constants because they have an x to the 0, which is not written. And what you'll also see later this year is quartic functions. That means the highest degree on x is 4, and quintic, which means the highest degree on x is 5, just like the one we saw on the previous slide. These words will get thrown around a lot this year, but as long as you recognize that the degree of a polynomial is the highest exponent on x that you find, you'll be fine. So I am going to ask you what is the degree and leading coefficient of each of these polynomial functions. Let's start with this. The degree is the highest exponent we see on x. I see x to the 7, x to the 2, and x to the 0. That means the degree is 7. The leading coefficient is the coefficient on the x with the highest degree. So that's one third. It's the number in front of the x with the highest exponent on it. Pretty easy. Let's do a whole bunch more because they don't have to necessarily be written in order. This is a reminder that function notation exists. p of x is 9 minus 7 cubed minus 8 thirteenths of x squared. The degree is the highest exponent, that's 3. The leading coefficient is the number in front of the x with the highest exponent, that's negative 7. Here there are no exponents explicitly written, but this is x to the 1, and this constant is x to the 0. Therefore, the degree is 1, it is a linear function. And the leading coefficient is 5, because that's what's in front of x to the 1. Here f of x is some combination. The highest exponent that I see is 5. C 
See how I tried to trick you by putting it at the end? And the leading coefficient is the number in front of x to the 5, and in that, this case it's negative 9. Pretty easy once you know what each of the words mean. Now the end behavior of polynomials is something you will have to learn and memorize. Polynomials of an even degree, that means x squared, and that you'll recognize these as parabolas, or x to the 4 quartic functions, will point in the same direction as x approaches negative and positive infinity, aka if it points up on the left, it points up on the right, and if it points down to the left, it will point down to the right. That is only true when the highest exponent on x is even. What I want you to note is that if there is a positive leading coefficient, it will point up in both directions. You recognize that from parabolas. If a parabola has a positive a, it opens up. And this quartic function opens up even though it has a couple extra bends in it. A negative leading coefficient on an even degree polynomial means it points down in both directions. This parabola opens down and this quartic function opens down as well. For an odd degree polynomial, it will point in opposite directions. A linear function, x to the 1, is an odd degree. And so if it points down to the left, it points up to the right. This cubic function points down to the left and up to the right. This quintic function points down to the left and up to the right. This is always true for a positive leading coefficient on an odd degree polynomial. Negative leading coefficient is exactly the opposite. Up to the left and down to the right, up to the left and down to the right for cubics, and up to the left, down to the right for quintics as well. Now, it doesn't matter how high or low the total degree of the polynomial is. If it is odd, it will follow this pattern. Opposite directions, up to the left or right. <laughs> up to the right if it's positive, up to the left if it's negative, and then the other side points in the opposite direction. A few of the properties you're going to have to know include the fact that they are functions which means they pass the vertical line test. They don't loop back on themselves. What you might remember is that a function is continuous and it does not loop back on itself the same way a circle does. A circle is not a function. Polynomials are. The domain of a polynomial function will always be x, e, r, because you can plug in any value of x you want and you'll get a value of y out. Now the range of polynomial functions is y e r if the degree is odd. If I backtrack, I will show you that it goes all the way down to negative infinity to the left here and all the way up to positive infinity here with no breaks. Same here, it goes down forever here, up forever here, up forever here, down forever here. These are the odd degree polynomials. An even degree polynomial, if I go one previous, will have a minimum or a maximum, and therefore their ranges are not y, e, r. So the range is y, e, r, or y is an element of all real numbers if the degree of the function is odd. 